Good morning, everybody. I wanted to take a moment to chat with you about the root cause approach to common and often normalized symptoms that we experience and different states of dis-ease, being the opposite of feeling at ease, right? So, you know, be it experiencing things like chronic or acute fatigue, um, digestive issues, hormonal issues, mental state depletion or anxiety or frequent overwhelm or frequently being in a state of um, stress, fight and flight, tension, feeling rigid, feeling depleted and drained, as well as inflammation in the body, inflammation in the gut, different digestive issues that, you know, so much of it is so common these days and we can look good on the outside while not actually feeling well on the inside and living in a society where we put a lot of focus on good morning everybody on how we are looking on the outside and as long as everything is portrayed well and the shop front is set up nicely you know we tend to suppress what's really going inside and that's being promoted on a societal level so it makes it even harder for us to switch on to actually i think what i'm experiencing inside is not my optimal for well-being and it leads to us normalizing symptoms because they are so common you know speaking about like whatever i'm experiencing oh these skin issues or hormonal things or my god i'm always bloated and then so often we get feedback of oh you know so me too and it's normal it's normal it's normal also when we're going into the doctor's office in allopathic western medicine actually and we're diving into that a little bit deeper in my work but western medicine testing often cannot detect what's going on with us until a state of disease is progressed to stage three four or five according to more holistic root cause classification which means when we come in with milder symptoms that actually are already the body getting loud getting like hello something is not going right here Often we get a feedback of, oh, that's normal, that's nothing to worry about, like headaches every every so often, normal, digestion, normal, just take these pingers for it that have side effects and then you're in that whole cycle, right? So I just sort of emphasize that just let's question like what we're experiencing just because we know many other people that experience that too or just because we've been experiencing it for quite a while, does that make it normal? Like, is it normal to not feel good in a body that when we look back at nature's design and look out there to how everything else is designed in nature, it's designed to function optimally, right? Like, how much does a tree grow as tall as it can? How high does a bird fly as high as it can? How much does a flower blossom as, as much as openly as it can? Like, it's not it's not our normal design to be born for no obvious reason just malfunctioning you know our body is held so much innate intelligence and healing capacity we all have the potential to feel good and there's really often when we start to return back to um the realization of that everything is interconnected and interdependent versus separate and independent which is again also how our western medicine approach looks at things feeling a sneeze come on so wait for it <laughs> once you realize the interconnectedness of things that we don't look at like oh you've got gut issues we just look at the stomach but instead we're like right there's something going on in here what's the big picture how can i zoom out how can i look at the whole of me Permaculture does that, Ayurveda does that. The more we do that, the more we find a really simple but profound root cause approach that A, helps us to understand our symptoms as messengers and B, allows us to overhaul our state of disease and return, recalibrate, I'm saying return because it is our natural state, back to a state of disease by actually honing and cultivating that deeper body awareness, body connection, learning to understand what is she, he, our body vessel trying to tell us. And on that same token, taking our autonomy back and 
stepping back into self-empowerment and self-reliance. So, you know, as I already mentioned, Ayurveda has a very holistic approach to that. Other systems do as well, like permaculture applies it to how we interact with and manage and then reap from our environment. Like, if you're familiar with permaculture, they talk about zones. You've got zone zero, zero, that's within yourself, your body vessel, you. Then zone, however they go, exactly zero, one or something might be you and your partnership or your family. And then it's your fam, your, your extended family. And then it's your home, the land that you're living on. And then it's branching further out, 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 right? Which is the same principles as an Ayurveda where we just look at this, we have this understanding of interconnectedness interconnectedness which means that really everything is a microcosm i am a microcosm within the macrocosm of my environment within the macrocosm of my family unit my home my environment my geographical location my state my country the climate zone i'm in and going 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 right which is this forever um like the cell division effect in a, in a sense, like every macrocosm contains so many microcosms. I am the macrocosm, the big part of the microcosm of my internal workings, of the internal systems that are going on within me in my, yes, biology, but also my mind, my mind-heart connection, my physical and metaphysical aspects. And that also means that all microcosms within a macrocosm are governed by the natural rhythms, like our circadian rhythms, of that macro macrocosm, right? Like we are all to a degree governed by the natural rhythm and the ebb and flow of the macrocosm of our environment that is influenced by the natural circadian rhythms, the cycle of the sun, the cycle of the moon, right? And so the more we start to pay attention to, well, what actually is the natural rhythm of my environment, a baby in the womb, right is experiencing that womb life to the natural rhythm of its environment of the mother's heartbeat of the mother constricts and it grows tight the environment grows tight that's what the baby learns to know and adjust to whereas if the mother bro grows deeply the heart beats evenly and smoothly and steadily then that sets the rhythm and the environment for the baby's life right so it applies in every context no sneeze is coming that's good <laughs> So, and when we apply that back to our symptoms and our um, anatomy, so to speak, so I already mentioned instead of what we often know in Western medicine, looking isolated at, oh, you've got a problem right there. Let's just look at this little thing right there. Oh, I can't see anything. So here, just take those pingers and try them out, right? Well, you can't, we can't see anything if we zoom in too much. So it's this constant dance of zooming in to be able to perceive and to see like, oh, I'm feeling something inside of me. Let me slip into that. Let me use my breath, my body awareness to really move into that area of, mm, actually, it's tension, it's tightness in my gut. And you, right, we zoom in to clearly perceive what's the quality of what's going on there, of the symptom. But then to get to the root cause, we need to zoom back up to see everything in its interconnectedness and in its larger context. And that's how Ayurveda, for example, approaches anatomy. So instead of looking at that's your heart, that's your liver, and so forth, Ayurveda looks at the body, A, as part of a physical, metaphysical, broader than just what we see system. So it does involve energetic energetic practices, the subtle energetics, the, the chakra systems. But even on the physical note, it will not look at the liver as just the liver, but the liver naturally always will be part of a larger system. Ayurveda looks at things in tissue um, as tissue groups and channels. So for example, we've got Anabahasotas, which is Sanskrit language, and that means the food carrying channel, which then in effect means that food carrying channel, Anabahasotas, includes everything that's involved in carrying food down our pipeline. So it's not just the stomach, it's not just the gut, it's actually it involves my mouth, my tongue, the taste receptors on the tongue that correspond to the taste receptors in the nose that both give signals to the stomach of, oh, we've got this sort of food coming in. It's that kind of quality. Let's get those kind of enzymes ready so we can digest it most efficiently. 
yeah it's a full co-creation that whole process it involves my um the throat and then the whole food pipe going down from here into stomach through the valve into lower um small intestine big intestine until we eventually pass left um you know non-usable leftovers out as stool and as body excretions and also though from there the liver is part of that system too that's then further breaking down the nutrients that we need the little aspects that we need and carries them throughout through the whole body system for further nourishment so that's always the whole context in which we would see for example our liver as well as any other any other aspects so just keeping it there as an example so not only does Ayurveda look at these um, different tissue groups and channels and they're broader than organ channels as you've just seen it's this um, interconnected holistic system of things that share or that could create a certain function in the body but also do they all build on one one another so there's seven different channel systems in the body that Ayurveda speaks of on tissue states um, tissue groups and one builds upon the other upon the other upon the other upon the other and it all starts with the example that i just brought which is anavahasrotas the food the food carrying channel that is the first channel that is responsible for our nourishment or lack of and our interaction with the environment so why because we just brought the fruit the food example on right and that is the substance that we need to sustain a physical body vessel in this physical in the in this physical plane so from there from this channel nourishment is then being passed on into the second tissue channel like into our muscles into our um into our fat channel into our what else is there muscle fat um maja our nervous tissue our nervous system our bone tissue our and so forth up into the mind up into our reproductive tissues and reproductive channel which again involves all of our different reproductive um layers that are part of the reproductive system or process so for us women it's um yes releasing an egg and having it fertilized it's our menstrual cycle it's everything to do with that it's our endocrine glands that govern our hormones and so forth but again they are all being nourished in turn by that first tissue layer which is our digestive tract and our digestive channel so that means that if we're nourishing ourselves insufficiently on that first layer or if there's imbalance going on and our body cannot fully absorb what we're taking in or we're taking in stuff that doesn't have the right nutrient um, density. We can't yeah, either absorb it or it's simply not enough to start with and not the right stuff to start with for us. Then we're going to experience issues in any, in any of the other following layers of our being. Which then comes back to the symptoms that I mentioned at the start of this life. So be it any fatigue, be it any mental health digestive issues is not ob obvious from from this example but um in stable moods feeling low feeling constantly motivated having low self-esteem low self-worth and confidence feeling as though uh, you're always carrying the weight of the world in on your shoulders you can't quite make a step forward or on the flip side feeling always anxious always scattered always all over the show having skin issues that persist chronic fatigue exhaustion weight gain and you can't shake it um joint inflammation body pains anything i want to say 99 percent of the symptoms that we're experiencing come back down to that something is wrong in the primary or in the initial first tissue layer of our body in our digestive tract and that goes beyond food and food absorption as in the food in our plate that is a Veda calls this force that creates transformation that transforms what we take in into nutrients or gets rid of the rest they call it agni agni is the digestive fire the digestive force it is that it's it's that which transforms and that's beyond just physical food nutrients agni is is the force responsible within us to um a assimilate and then to process and digest 
any interaction with an experience experience of the world we're living in. So yes, food, that's an obvious example, breaking down the nutrients, da da da. But anything else we take in, it how do we digest our life? You know, how do we digest our relationships? How are we feeling in our relationships? How are we feeling in our workplace, in our environment, in our home environment, in our own mind? How, you know, what, how are we speaking to ourselves? That is all input, any input. How do we feel in the climate zone we're living in? That's all input. And depending on how we can digest that and how it affects us, does it bring us a greater equilibrium and add to our equilibrium or does it take away from it and bring us into a state, no matter how subtle, of imbalance, that's what's going to make the difference. And that's giving us, um, that's in turn giving us a good idea of the state of our agni, of our transformative power. So... As I said, 99% of any symptoms of dis-ease that we can experience, physical or otherwise, come back to the state of our acne. So what we focus on in a holistic root cause approach to any dis-ease is to strengthen and rebuild our acne, our digestive power, our transformative power, so that whatever life is giving us, we can take it, process it, look at it. If it's not for us, then you know, repel it or absorb what we need. Agni is compromised or also the more compromised Agni is, the more armor we accumulate in our system. Armor is toxins, basically, toxic waste, gunk, that's clogging our channels. And again, that's going beyond physical toxins. Physical toxins might be sticking with the food example because it's, I guess, most tangible pesticides yeah chemicals in our food but also incompatible food combining like if we're eating say a, a cooked red meat hard to digest meal and then we eat some raw fruit and sell it after it's going to create festering in our gut because fruit a needs a very different ph to digest and has a very different trans um what's the word transfer rate like it digests so much quicker than a heavy meat dense cooked meal would so combining these two will create festering and a wrong environment in our stomach that then leads to gas or pain or constipation or diarrhea or those symptoms yeah so that can also create just taking in stuff that's not right for us or that's not in right combination or right quantity for us all of that can also contribute to creating more armor and again, as I said before, how are we digesting life? So mental toxins, energetic toxins from being in toxic relationships that can be toxic interactions. If our default is to constantly yell at each other or like as soon as there's a disagreement, right? Or yeah, that, that'll all create toxicity actually also in our physical vessel. If we think of manifestation of things, everything, every dissonance and therefore every dis-ease starts in the subtle realms like in our thoughts and our energy field through our relationships the words that we use how we feel in our interactions how we feel when we eat the food all of that if something carries on that carries dissonance for too long undetected and then not acted upon then it will grow in density that's how manifestation works too, right? Even in chemistry class, we, we start with the tiny little molecules and atoms, grow into mo molecules, and then the right and large enough combination of them will eventually manifest into dense solid matter. And the same with that. If, if this disease in the subtle realms goes undetected and then acted upon for too long, it will manifest into something denser and eventually show up in our bodies as physical symptoms or in our lives as symptoms or both, right? Because usually things have a snowball effect because everything is interconnected. <clears throat> so again, in an holistic root cause approach, how can we address this is by getting really clued on and building, cultivating a heightened awareness of our symptoms as our messengers. And as I said at the start of this, this life here was that what we used to in Western medicine and our testing and what especially allopathic medicine practitioners can diagnose 
is already very advanced, as in it's progressed into what Ayurveda would call stage 3, 4, or sometimes even 5 out of 6 um, of disease. And that means by that point that you get the diagnosis of, you know, nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, now you've got liver cirrhosis or whatever it is. It's already so advanced. That's not the starting point. You didn't wake up this morning and have liver cirrhosis. There's been so much. Um, there's been so many pre, pre precursing symptoms maybe where the body was whispering more and then it was starting to talk and then it was starting to talk more loudly and then once you get the diagnosis the body is shouting at you and that's where we start to listen but initially the body was just excuse me something's wrong something is something is wrong something is wrong something is wrong right and that's where we often pick it up so ayurveda teaches us to understand the whispers and to decipher the whispers because that's where everything is still most malleable and easily to yeah easily to reverse um or to recalibrate and then saying that you know life is as we know change is constant where we find our flow be that within ourselves or be that within our relationships cool i just got my kid worked out we finally have a good sleeping routine and suddenly you're in the next stage of development and everything is back out of the window or you just found something diet wise that works for you and then we're in a new season and you start from scratch again like change is unavoidable we will always be in the stands of feeling potentially really good in one moment and then our environmental factors change or the other part in a in in a relationship changes and we are required to dance that dance so that's what it is right moving with the changes with the seasons and again, that's where the more we are clued on and understand the subtleties of things and the subtle qualities of things and notice symptoms when they're just a little niggle here and a little niggle there. And we're like, hmm, I'm feeling less than optimal. What is this? What is that quality? What is, how can I rebalance it? Oh, I know with the opposite. The more we get comfortable with that and that becomes our baseline of self-awareness the more we are able to remain fluid and in surrender to life and and its changes while dancing ourselves back into our equi equilibrium again and again as life evolves as we evolve as seasons change right and that actually is a massive part of self-empowerment of truly standing in our power we cannot bypass the body we cannot bypass our physical well-being Really, it is the absolute non-negotiable foundation for anything we do, whether that's the, you know, big goals that we want to kick in, in, in this physical realm and our career, make a change in the world, or whether it is in the more, we are healers and we want to be clear channels and clear conduits and show up as our best and most potent self within the healing realm. Again, it cannot happen if we're bypassing our physical vessel and our channels, physical and metaphysical channels, are clogged with armor, with toxic waste, with gunk that's creating cloudiness, which is like you're trying to look out into this beautiful landscape through a dirty, filthy window. And what you're going to see is all muddy and tainted and you see bits over there, but not really, not clearly. You can't perceive a clear reality. But once you clear that window and it's crystal clear transparent you can see clearly and you can perceive the environment and the reality around you as you know, you can perceive the full truth and you can see the full picture clearly and therefore act from there in reality if we are clouded within ourselves if our channels are clouded and it does start in the body if our digestion is off that we have other symptoms and and and, <clears throat> and other channels and pathways of our body we will not be able to fully clearly manifest we will not be able to take clear aligned for us truly aligned action we might think we do but very likely it'll turn out down the track or not so down the track that oh i've been doing that thing where i thought that was my goal because that's what everyone is doing over there or that's what they're talking over there or i thought that this is what success looks like but actually this is what success really means to me like we can only get so clear on those things if we are clear within ourselves, if we can be a clear conduit and have a solid foundation of well-being. And that does start in our physical vessel, because guess what? We are still all here in a human vessel, whether we like it or not. So 
the more we make that our solid foundation, the more we can elevate from there and truly thrive. It really is a non-negotiable, yeah? Um, I experienced an amazing example last week with a client, actually, who ended up, he had a, um, not an impact, he had a shock trauma and ended up with bulging discs, excruciating pain in his back, excruciating pain in his back, emergency, getting all these painkillers that ended up taking off the edge, but still not really. For days, he was still with every inch that he moved in so much pain and nothing would really move or clear up until we looked at his digestion and we used some enemas and cleared up the digestive tract, like getting back into regular eating regular meals at regular intervals, the right kind of food that just helps the body to retain and gain fluids again and therefore promote the movement within and enemas. And it was literally from that moment on, once he's done these enema protocols, it, things cleared. He could finally through the pingers that he took before. So pingers for me are like painkillers and whatnot, all this strong stuff, um, tramadol and whatnot, um, for which there is a, right, it's, there's a place for it. Western medicine very much is emergency medicine. And that was one, but the side effect is that here's something for your pain and it's going to block up your gut. So nothing is going to move. Nothing is going to happen in the body. And while it gives us a good little bandaid for the pain that often we do need. Yeah. We sometimes we, and it, it's again, that's also our self responsibility and it's important to switch on to actually, I am on the floor right now. And I need the support that I can get. I need these other approaches, the, you know, the painkillers, what the emergency can offer, all of that. Um, so there's definitely a place for it. But also it's still a band-aid. It just helps us to take the edge off in the moment to come back into a state of like, okay, I got myself enough from here. How can I proceed? And in order to start to um be able to rely on our bodies self healing capacity again that is incredibly powerful we need to start working with our body again and see like okay why is my body not self healing right now and in that case because the painkillers with the side effects the gut was blocked up digestion doesn't didn't work which meant that not only was food and stuff not moving through but if you think of like di digestion is governed by your metabolism so it's all movement of fluids and um chemical cocktails in your body so if metabolism is not working if it's so low that means nothing including your blood is pumping at a proper vital rate through your body so everything is kind of slow flowing through like honey thick honey in winter versus water running through your channels yeah and when that happens it means that a any healing chemicals like any hormones and enzymes and any um antibodies that the body naturally produces cannot get to sight because there's traffic jams going on everywhere and also because whatever we're taking in like the food the painkillers the chemicals all of that also the inflammation that's building on site from shock trauma from impact trauma from acute pain things that we experience the inflammation cannot move out of sight so it all accumulates and that accumulates more armor more toxins in the body if we can't pass our stool through and it just sits here for too long and sits and sits and sits and sits and sits, and sits our um gut membranes all inner membranes are semi-permeable to different degrees that means that nutrients can pass through but also toxins can pass through if, so if we're constipated forever or in that example even for a day or two if the transit rate just drags out instead of passing out the toxins that we're meant to pass out through our sweat our urine our stool it gets reabsorbed into the body through our membranes and that's also why as another side note about these enemas for example in Ayurvedic medicine, and you don't see it that often in the West because we don't really have many Ayurvedic doctors here, like Ayurvedic medical doctors, whereas in India that's normal. So over there where you have a lot of medical doctor, Ayurvedic medical doctors practicing, many of them use enemas, herbal and oil enemas, so medicine fluid up your bum, as the number one treatment for 
a gazillion different symptoms and states of disease, including actually mental health. It can be the number one treatment method for mental health. And why is that? Because of what I just explained. Like when things are not moving properly through our digestive tract, if we're not digesting life properly and it's sitting stagnant there, cannot be nutrients are not being assimilated, we start to assimilate the toxins. Also, we've got as a side note about 70% of our immune tissue sitting around our gut. So when that stagnation happens or when we take in things we shouldn't take in that are not good for us, too many chemicals, too much pesticides, whatnot, wrong food, combining all the stuff that we went through, that will alarm the immune tissue around our gut that directly sends um, signals back to the brain. We actually find that the body-brain connection, that it's about 80% of signals within this connection are being sent from the body to the brain from the body to the brain whereas our, the brain only sends about 20 percent like initiates from up here down to the body wild hey what does that mean that the body has incredible innate intelligence that is there for our taking for our understanding for our teach me tell me it's all in here it's not out there it's not in the book it's not what old mate is doing over there what they're teaching you at school of course it's important with um, discernment to take in information from outside of you that's going to enrich you yeah but all the real wisdom is in here ready for our taking in our body that's the leadership this is the leadership this is the follower yeah <laughs> um yeah and just concluding that example that i just brought of my client with um the acute pain who had the shock trauma bulging discs load of pain Pain wouldn't subside really even with painkillers. And once we started working on his digestion again, he cleared it all out, got movement going, got the metabolism going again through enemas and yeah, through just moving things on and out and through. Literally from that moment on, from that day, his pain declined at such an amazing rate. It took another two days for him to be fluidly moving again, which is amazing. Up until then, he was just laying for two days and with every inch that he moved in so much pain he was screaming out and again why is that removing the toxins the stagnation from the body getting movement happening meant that inflammation could move out that the body's natural antibodies and its natural immune response could move in and bring in all the all the healer particles into side that needed healing and recalibrate itself for me that was just last week again such a moment of holy shit this is why this work like holistic root course approaches to everything and is so important it's just such a non-negotiable to learn to become literate in our own bodies to become literate in our own functioning of and in creating self-creating because again the power is in here it's not out there it's not what i say it's about learning how is my body speaking to me? How is she, he communicating with me? How can I understand it and how can I act on it? And the better we get with that and the, be the more we prioritize cleaning up and nurturing our baseline, the more we're creating a clear, solid foundation, a new baseline, a new normal for us to truly thrive from. Yeah. We cannot thrive if there's dissonance, chronic dissonance going on in our body. We cannot truly thrive if we remain in all these little, and you might be, oh, it's little, it's nothing. I still look good. I, I still get stuff done at work. Like, you know, I can still hide it. Therefore, I'm not going to address it. But all these little niggles, believe me, be it the fatigue, feeling always tired, all these little digestive things, not pulling for two days, not normal, not normal. And not addressing that stuff, it will not be in the butt sooner or later. It will, 100%. And not just through declining health and when our health goes, what have we got left? What quality of life have we truly got left? But it will nip us in the butt in everything that we aspire to be and do. And yeah. And again, even for, as I said earlier, we can only manifest, we can only create the life we truly truly want to live we can only even be aware of what is truly aligned for us 
if we've got a clear channel and a solid baseline of holistic health in our system and this sense of body literacy health is not depending on i'm working with natural this naturopath or this this other practitioner forever till the rest of my life and they tell me what to do and how to be healthy it's no coming back into our own power by understanding our own vessel so powerful and the absolute baseline and that's why i'm so passionate about um self re-empowering people into self-healing and self-empowerment through rebuilding this body literacy that is available to all of us and Ayurveda is an incredible pathway and system that makes it so simple but profound for all of us to come back into accessing that and then accessing our full potential. Yeah, so good. And that's also why you might have seen at the moment we've got our intake for living in sync back open, which is my signature Ayurvedic reset, self-healing and self-empowerment program. We open that every spring and every autumn and both of these intakes are different and they're time limited. They will be closing again the closer we move to now summer and then the other part of the year winter. Why? Because it is a five week reset journey. And as you heard me talk for a while now about this body literacy, about our body being a microcosm within this larger macrocosm of our environment, of our climate, of the nature around us, of, yeah, that means we're moving with her cycles and rhythms and the most ideal time for us to cleanse and reset our slate and reset our baseline is when nature is also doing that. And I like to call the seasons we're in right now, spring and also autumn on the flip side, transitory seasons, because we're moving in those times from one extreme to the other. Like we're moving from the cold and damp and rainy and dark and dullness of winter, which is very much water and earth energies to, and here in my climate in the Southwest, that's very extreme to the other end, which is dry, hot, light, fiery summer energy, right? And in order to get from one extreme to the other, we kind of, the pendulum has to swing while the pendulum swings and also swinging back it's like nature's in a little bit of upheaval like we can notice right now we're getting we're getting warmer days but still have really cold nights and there's still rain but then we've got 25 degrees and sun and whatnot so while nature is kind of making that transition and still finding her feet again from coming from those qualities moving into that phase it's the ideal time for us to do that with our bodies and our microcosms as well so it's a very potent time to reset our reset our slate this is a five week living in sync is a five week self-paced journey so you do it in your own regime own time but over five weeks ideally consecutively because we are going on to a guided one week ayurvedic cleanse there's not a single day of not eating or missing meals or it's quite the opposite it's all about really embodying what I just spoke into here of resetting our digestive channel so we can elevate and reset the health of all other channels and actually nip symptoms in the butt on a root cause level and the root cause is how are we digesting life so we're spending five weeks together optimizing how we're digesting life and the most tangible way of doing that with which you get immediate results is going through a physical reset as well that involves um, food medicine it's all whole food based for five weeks self-care diet lifestyle and um, little herbal practices to implement to help you clear out armor clear out toxins strengthen and reset your agony your digestive fire your transformative power within and wipe your slate clean start on that new new baseline of well-being that can be your new normal i've had dozens of people go through this course with me over the last few seasons we've not run it for the last couple of years while building shambhala nature retreat so this is the first time in a new format that it's out again that it's self-paced and a beautiful online portal um there's live q a sessions with me group sessions along the way via zoom you can submit your questions, like either be there live or submit your questions if you can't be there live to make sure they're getting answered. And you're completely held in this journey as you're learning about 
optimizing your vitality, optimizing your, your metabolism, getting, you know, getting to know your unique mind body type, your unique constitution, according to which some things give you balance where other things get you out of balance and that's unique to you and your system. It's not generic to what they happen, happen, what they saying over there, like all these fragmented one size fit all wellness trends that if you're like me or you've got Instagram and you care about your health, I'm sure you've tried so many of them and have they worked? Have you gotten lasting results? So this really is about getting to know yourself, the, your own back of the hand to know what's bringing me balance when and what isn't according to what my body says according to who i am and you can get there within literally as little time as five weeks it's an incredibly nourishing journey and it's yeah it's a real foundational way of embodying ayurveda and this new level of well-being i love taking people through it and literally every single person who has gone through this with me has reported either subsiding of most or all of their symptoms of them lessening or completely disappearing of and that ranges from headaches from cold hand and feet from poor circulation inflammation to the body chronic gut health like having been constipated for 30 years that kind of stuff too actually i can digest food is moving through everyone has reported how they are feeling energized clear light within their bodies they suddenly have this new direction again which connects us to our purpose in a fully different more crystal clear alive powerful way than we may have potentially ever felt before because we're clearing the internal gunk yeah so that's why living in sync to live in sync with who we are, with the circadian rhythms, with our own nature, with our own body and what she's trying to tell us is the key to authentic, true thriving and making that your baseline. Thriving can be your baseline and that does not mean that we never have a bad day, but that means that we can pick ourselves back up. We know when and how to do so, yeah, and that we understand how to listen to our body signals so we don't have to have chronic symptoms we don't have to suffer we don't have to suffer anything for prolonged periods of time in any way it's all in our hands you no know? and that's what this journey is teaching us which is why i'm so excited um to share it with you and i'd love to see some of you inside if you'd still love to um get to know this approach a bit more we have got a free Ayurveda Foundations mini course that you can find over on our website, shambhalaawakeninghub.org. You can get around that at any time, at any time. And also at the moment, I have just put up a circadian thriving free masterclass that shares with you three potent ways of sharpening your body literacy and, um, yes yeah, starting to gain this ability to recalibrate yourself at different times of the year and understanding her symptoms and signals and how to rebalance that it's a really good taster and it's also a really good foundation to then launch you into our five-week program living in sync i'd love to see you inside it's an amazing uh, self-love self-care lifestyle how are you digesting life overhaul that can lead you from feeling that will lead you if you commit to it from feeling mediocre and ugh, to feeling clear and sharp and alive in your body with inner radiance and digest life optimally which in turn builds that strength and mental and emotional resilience it sharpens your yeses and your noes you see and feel more clearly what true alignment is to you it connects you deeper with your purpose you are on on more like we might think we are productive and addictive to being addicted to being productive and efficient but if we're actually feeling groggy all the time and fatigued and don't digest and hold our poos in and only go to the toilet every three days or whatever we're actually not that productive no matter what we're telling ourselves you will be amazed at how productive you can be while actually remaining and feeling in your ease and flow when we're taking care of our baseline and that's what living in sync is teaching so if you've got any questions, pop them below. I'd love to answer um, anything that's on your heart, any uncertainties around it. 
and yeah also reach out to me I'm always approachable send me a message and yeah thank you for being here I am looking forward to seeing your insight there and here's to your holistic well-being and to you truly truly thriving which is all of our birthrights lots of love beautiful people